Hello guys and gals, if is F1 backwards here and welcome to another Games Explained. And today I am looking at Inside. And just a quick slight warning, if you don't like games that offer no solid concrete ending, well it may just mess up your OCD a little bit. So let me just explain from the beginning anyway. Uh, the gameplay and levels are straightforward enough, so we get from A to B, etc. So then, at the beginning of the game, uh, a boy, again, known only locally as Boy, slides down a rocky incline. Um, he starts running through a forest, which he encounters mass guards with flashlights, vehicles with mounted spotlights, guard dogs, uh, quite a few enemies, and then as you progress through the game, you end up on a farm where parasitic worms cause pigs to run rampant, or rampant even. The boy uses the farm animals and equipment to escape a pretty much abandoned city where just zombie-like people are moved completely through mind control, which is a prominent feature of the game. Now, beyond the city, though, is a large factory of flooded rooms, a shockwave atrium, and pretty much a laboratory environment where scientists perform underwater experiments on bodies, which could be potentially another explanation why you end up getting that sort of power throughout the game. That isn't really explained, um, as Playdead likes to do this. But again, while traversing all these areas and looking around, this is where the prominent feature comes in. Known locally only as Boy, it uses a mind control helmet to control the lifeless grey bodies to get him from point A to point B. But the lifeless grey bodies, who seemingly are already made to work for the organisation, they're actually controlling the vans and dogs. So again, you'll continue all through the offices, all through the laboratories, and eventually, coming towards the end of the game, the boy will see some scientists observing a large spherical chamber. Now, the boy enters this chamber and discovers a large blob-like creature who is called the Huddle, who is made of humanoid limbs connected to four control rods. Now, after you get rid of those, after you disconnect the rods, the boy is actually pulled into the huddle. And this is where it gets tricky. So, you all through the game, you've basically gone through the entire game to get to this point. That's not really explained why, sort of, until the end. And it's not even really explained. There's just a bunch of theories, but these theories are actually pretty fantastic. So... I might have just duped you in here. There's no actual explanation of what the hell actually goes on, and you'll see why. So when the boy gets into the huddle then, he will escape confinement. You crash through a bunch of offices. You actually kill some of the scientists in his path. Um, even though the scientists tried to trap the huddle, again, you will escape, and you will break through a wooden wall. Now, when you break through that wooden wall, it'll come down to a forest hill, come to a stop at a sort of um, grassy coastline, with a whole bunch of light around it, and the game ends. And this is where it's meant to be sort of open to interpretation. And this is why I said earlier that, you know, if you're not <laughs> if you're not happy with a solid concrete ending, eh, you know, like I said, it could just mess up your OCD a bit. But we have a whole bunch of theories now as to what the huddle was, why the game just ends suddenly, Play Dead are basically not going to tell you, so this is all up to your imagination, which on one hand is pretty good, and on the other hand can be slightly frustrating if you were wanting to see an ending yourself. So then, on to theory number one, and this is pretty much the most obvious and the most sort of video game logical explanation. And the first one is that the boy was actually being controlled by the huddle, and the blob-like creature only wanted to basically break free so it could stop being experimented on. Which is, again, pretty obvious when you think about it. Because, again, considering that the actual boy broke into a pretty heavy fortified facility, he knew exactly where to go. It wasn't just a random guess, he knew exactly where to go in order to free the huddle and then becoming a part of it. And like, we said, like I said earlier, mind control is very much a prominent feature uh, and big gameplay mechanic through this game. So it does actually make sense that the huddle managed to use the boy, who, remember, is the youngest. You don't see another kid throughout the entirety of the game, just usually adults who have already been mind-controlled. So it would sort of make sense that the boy was mind-controlled by the huddle. But again, there's all sorts of questions for this. How did the boy, again, like we said, know to go there? 
Why was the blob sort of a magnetic thing, a magnetic creature? He's pulling the player in throughout the entire game. Again, has the boy got sort of some sort of power inside him, or was it just the fact that the blob needed just that one more person, that one more kid, potentially, to actually free itself? So again, quite a lot of questions on that first one, but it is pretty much the obvious. Hopefully I didn't blab on too much in that one, but on to theory two, and this is one where it's a, a kind of a similar theory, but the boy is actually being controlled by quite a few of the scientists throughout the game. Now, you probably have a little thing to yourself and think, well, how the huddle makes more sense. But the evidence that actually points to this is how some of the scientists actually remember they appear to aid the huddle in escaping the facility. Now, if you play through it and actually look at it, you'll realise that is actually true. So, in this particular theory, the scientists have put the boy through many dangers, which of course is the entirety of the game, to gain more strength and more intelligent so that those particular qualities can then be absorbed by the huddle when the boy frees it, improving that creature in a desirable manner for the scientists, and therefore the scientists help the huddle escape. Yeah, that pretty much sums that one up. So, two of the theories you've got so far then is the huddle's mind controlling, and the scientists actually put on a sort of, you know, deadlier wipeout game in which the boy has to like you've seen, traverse through all kinds of dangers and things like that just to get to the end. So again, that does actually make a bit of sense. And that's all to do with the scientists appearing to actually help the huddle on its way out. After, you know, the huddle kills the ones that don't help him. Um, so that is theory number two. Now we move on to theory number three. And this one is probably the most sort of mind boggling of it all. And to get this particular theory ending, you actually have to complete the alternate ending of the game. So let me just explain how to do that first then. So you need to find every hidden orb in the game. Then you've got to replay one of the game's earlier set pieces, which is set in a cornfield. There's a hidden hatch here that when accessed, that actually leads to a musical puzzle. And all you've got to do is free that simple puzzle and you're home free. So that's how you actually enter that particular one. So this one then, this theory suggests that the boy is being controlled by something other than that which is physically represented in the game, i.e. you, yourself, the player. And the way they do this then, the conclusion ends when you get to, again, this particular ending, the boy unplugging the power to the facility. So after doing that, he then collapses into the same position as literally all the other mindless people that you've seen throughout the entirety of the game. And that is after you relinquish them from, from their control. And then the lights dim, and that is the end. So then, what makes it clear to us then is that the boy is being controlled the whole time by somebody else. Not the huddle, and not the scientist. Because, again, Stick with me on this one. So if he is being possessed and mind controlled by the huddle, he wouldn't be able to power himself down before achieving his goal, which is freeing the huddle. And the same would be true if he is being controlled by the scientists. But again, maybe we would looking at it, and then this is one we've got to think outside the box. And this is where, to be fair, this is one of the better and possibly more happier endings, even if it doesn't seem like it. It's potentially somebody we don't see, somebody who's not completely inside the facility. It's basically what they're saying is it's you, the player, you, yourself. And again, this is clever when you really think about it because to get to this particular ending, it relies on knowledge and accomplishments already achieved. Knowledge that, of course, at this point, neither the blob nor any scientists which have been in the game could have had at this juncture. Only, again, you, yourself, as the player should know this. And that is where the sort of theory for this one comes from. The player is actually inside the game. That is potentially where the title comes from as well. So it sort of acts as like a fourth wall break, you know, done sort of Deadpool style, but well, less funny at this point. But it's been done so elegantly and so fantastic, you would actually be hard pressed to kind of catch that. But of course, if you just want it to go sort of easier, the title can obviously refer to the boy just 
getting inside the facility to get inside the blob to escape. It literally depends on however way you personally want to look at it yourself. Like, I love the fact that it could be interpreted as us controlling the boy. Like I said, proper fourth wall break style. Now, there are plenty of other theories out there that people have pondered, very little ones you can search up, but they are the main three theories. I personally love the one which makes us sort of control the boy ourselves, which I thought was a pretty brilliant explanation, but there are so many interpretations about what is actually going on here, and Play Dead themselves, they were clever enough to offer just a bit of a, a nice trail to form a story, which, you know, everything was fantastically done, yet they leave the details basically just enough out, forcing us, ourselves, to have to actually think about what it could actually mean and what the ending could actually mean, what even the title means. So that was done so fantastically well, and I don't think they actually get enough credit for that. So I will leave you then with this final thought. The fact that the story itself of Inside isn't set in stone, it's not set in motion, it is actually the story that is inside your own head, which will have many people thinking about this for many years to come. But anyway, that's that for this video, guys. Um, I know it wasn't a total explanation, I don't think there's any explanation to this game, sadly, but there's plenty of theories going around. And hopefully you got a little bit closer to sort of understanding the story and the whole point of it. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one.